Final Fantasy XI was, in my opinion, one of the best MMOs of all time, and it's no secret modern games have struggled to recapture its magic. Complaints abound of newer titles struggling to get it, and in this series we're going to go through the little details that make all the difference. Instead of breezing through a list and skipping out on the important reasons these design choices were so crucial, we'll be focusing on one or two at a time to really talk about why they made such a difference for me. Because with games like Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen trying to bring back that classic feel, it's important to understand what really made games like Final Fantasy XI so special. So for that first entry, we're going to dive deep into enemy difficulty in the open world and that open world itself. Because guess what? Final Fantasy XI could be a dangerous place. Besides the ability to check an enemy's level, there's no real way to gauge difficulty as, as a player. You kind of just went around learning more about the enemies that you faced. Enemies could defeat single players brutally, even enemies of the same or lower level, and escaping wasn't usually an option. These zones were huge, and they would chase you to the ends of the earth. You fought to the death once you encountered an enemy, and usually that was your death. This meant, obviously, that avoiding combat was usually the better option. While this kind of sounds boring, it usually lent to you actually appreciating the zone, its music, changing weather, setting of the sun. You just kind of paid attention to your surroundings more. You weren't just focused on barreling your way through every kind of encounter. Early zones had actual roads and paths that were safer. Keyword safer, not safe. It created the feeling of a large world that you couldn't see all of because it was way too risky to explore too far beyond that road that you were on. I mean, everybody's first trip to Juno was fraught with peril and usually took two or three tries unless you were, you know, really careful, really slow and stayed on the path. But that's just it. Quests, missions, just generally how you'd have to navigate through Vanadil, they'd take you through zones way above your level all the time where your only option was to seek help or avoid contact entirely. Of course, there were spells like Sneak and Invisible, raising the usefulness and popularity of those jobs that could cast them. Because of all these factors, including just straight up time spent, jobs that had more options for speeding up travel or making it safer were more desired. It was a unique benefit that separated certain jobs from each other, which is another point for another day. But I love that aspect of, you know, making jobs unique and different from each other, and travel being one of the ways you could do that. But by creating that danger and risk, you've created a demand for safety. If not a player or a spell, there were also options like invis potions or sneak oils. By creating a demand for this, there was another aspect of the player economy, another choice for players, and now a financial investment to that safe travel. All of those amazing things were driven by that single concept, that not only were enemies difficult to defeat, but you need to spend time in and travel through zones that contained those difficult enemies, not just through areas you were safely strong enough in. A lot of games think that they get this by making enemies just kind of hard, but that doesn't work unless you have a reason to try and face them or get around them. If they're just kind of hard in a far off zone, you just wait till you're strong enough. Final Fantasy XI constantly tested your limits and put you in situations you probably couldn't get out of on your own. Of course, that is partially why it's an MMO, not a single player experience. But beyond that, it also just kind of gave these areas personality. Zones with tightly clustered enemies that were fond of linking together or, or so spread out that you know safe spaces were limited because there were just enemies everywhere, you'd associate them with danger, frustration, or relaxation if it's the opposite of those two things. It, it just depends. Zones that were difficult at a lower level might evoke rage and annoyance at first, but revisiting them later in game lets you experience them in a whole new light. Find corners you never knew existed once you're suddenly like, wow, I can check out this entire zone. I'm way too strong now. As a side note, I mean, that was just one of the cooler aspects of Final Fantasy XI's feeling of, of growth. As you grew in strength, it was one of the many other ways that you felt that impact. Revisiting old zones and traveling at ease, knowing nothing is strong enough to attack you anymore and definitely not strong enough to win, even if it does. Come on, that was awesome. Bringing us to the second aspect of what made this danger so important, it, it was shared. Instance content was rare and saved almost entirely for single fights or boss battles. What would now be known as dungeons were almost all open zones back in Final Fantasy XI. Get stuck between a rock and a hard place deep in the Boyata tree with no more cyan oils, someone might come along and rescue, or hell, you know, you could ask for help via your link shell or friends that you knew. You'd see other players run by, which could like cause tension if you're worried that they were after the same objective as you, or maybe not if you agreed to work together. Maybe they were just passing by and you saw them for like 10 seconds. Does anyone remember seeing 30 to 40 players run through Garlage Citadel or some other zone with an H&M pop swiftly approaching? It would spark such excitement and conversation in the group you were in. You're like, whoa, where are they off to? And someone would be like, ah, it's probably this. It was just cool. Or maybe you were by yourself and you just kind of chased after them to see what would happen. 
By making areas difficult and engaging in their own right, Final Fantasy XI was achieving the first step of forging a living, breathing world. It generates a reason to work with others, to travel in groups. But unless those areas are actually open to everyone at all times, it's just kind of a frustration because you can't adjust mid-flight. You can't get help from friends or wait for somebody to come along and then decide to dynamically group up because content like that is all instance these days. This isn't to say that there weren't faults with the concept. I mean, dying three times in a row to a notorious monster that sits Sitting right on your objective isn't fun. <laughs> Watching a goblin charge from seemingly miles away to right where you happen to be just because he felt like taking an extra long walk is the worst. But Final Fantasy XI truly felt like a world worth exploring, and I think one of the most important ways they did that was by making it difficult. By making distant corners hard to get to, it made it a goal worth achieving. Let me know in the comments whether or not you thought this was a good or bad aspect of Final Fantasy XI though in its heyday. Not to say it's not still there now at 99, but let's be honest, many of the original zones just aren't as hard now, and with trust, you always kind of have a pocket full of safety wherever you go. This really was something that 75 achieved so well, because there were so many areas that even at max level, things were just like capped out against you. Hopefully you'd like to see more videos like this because I'm excited about getting into more detail about some of the cooler aspects of Final Fantasy XI in future videos. So check back for more like this soon. As always, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, you should totally think about subscribing. I've got videos coming out twice a week and if you like this one, there's at least a chance you like some of the others that are very similar to this, so live dangerously. Let me know what you guys thought about the video in the comments and other videos you'd like to see. And finally, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Hunting for Games to keep up with all the latest stuff. See ya!